sauce. Oh yeah, let's get saucy. Yo, 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 welcome to the Weird Sauce Show. It's your personal armpit smeller, Fratzuki, right here with your personal fart smeller, Jay Stevens. Oh uh, yeah. Stinky. Well, we're here for you. You know, it sounds a little <laughs> weird, but we're here for you people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need people like uh, us in the world. Yes, you do. We'll be getting around to that a little bit later. Today, as you can see on the board, we're going to be talking about some weird jobs out there. And uh, armpit smeller and fart smeller are on the list. Yes, they are. Stay tuned for what else is on that funky you get, list. You get paid for that shit. Oh, yeah. They pay you for that. They pay you for smelling that yes, shit, literally. they do. So, yes, um, yeah, we found some weird stuff there. That's going to be a weird segment. That's coming up later on. Before we get to that, though, we got some crazy sports. You know it's Wednesday here. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some crazy sports going on. Last week, we did crazy ball sports. If you didn't check that out, uh, go ahead and hit that right there. You want to see that. We had a crazy one on there called Cal Calcio for uh, Storico. Yes, we did. Uh, you want to check that out. This week we got, I feel, maybe even some crazier ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a brutal one. That might be the craziest sport ever, but this week we got some really funky team sports. I mean, there's a lot of wacky, wacky sports going on around the world. Yeah, we're excited about uh, reporting this one. Yeah. And before we get to the weird jobs, too, we're also going to be running down some pyramid stuff, okay? Most of you know all the pyramid stuff in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We're going to be running through all the biggest, coolest pyramids that are not in Egypt. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, before we get into all that mess, uh, Jay Stevens told me before we started the episode that he wanted to start it off with a story. And yeah. I said, about what? He said, don't worry about it, bro. Just let me do my thing. So... Without further ado, here's Jay Stevens with a little story time. Yeah, so we're going to start off here uh, with the story I had at a, at a Chicago Cubs game, actually. A uh, big Cubs fan here about two or three years ago. Uh, so, you know, as you know, we live in Taiwan, right? So I tend to go back once a year. Haven't been back for a couple years now. But, uh, yeah, when I went back about two or three years ago, uh, me and a couple of my buddies, John Nevin, his brother Chris Nevin, uh, my mom and my sisters went to a Cubs game, and it was just, you know, a normal Cubs game. And uh, till it gets to the bottom of the ninth inning, right? Bottom of the ninth inning, six to four. Uh, Cubs are losing, right? David Bodie comes up to the plate, smack, dong, bye, goes, two run home run, ties it six to six. Next run, or next batter up, Anthony Rizzo, first pitch, bang, goodbye, seven six. But the craziest part about this story is. Cubs end up winning it seven to six. Okay, craziest part about the story is my boy John's like, "Yo, man, let's wear, let's all wear Bulls jerseys to the game, right?" I have a black uh, pinstriped Pippen one. He has a Jordan one, and his brother has a Rodman one, right? Yeah. And we're like, "No, that's that's stupid, man. We're going to the Cubs game. We gotta bring our wear our Cubs gear." And he's like, "No, nah, just wear it. We're gonna get on TV, man. I promise you." So I'm like, "All right." All right, well, I mean, fuck it, let's do it. So we wear our Cubs jerseys, right? So no, you wear the Bulls. Who jerseys. wear the Bulls jerseys? Yeah. I'm sorry, to the Cubs game, right? Yeah. And uh, and yeah, so Bodie hits his dinger in this ball, this home run, and it goes about five feet to our right, right? And I'm like, man, we must have been on TV. Like, we had to be on TV. Yeah. And the story gets a little deeper, because then I message my boy Cam, right? And I'm like, dude, you got to check for us. You got to check for us on TV. Like, we had to be on TV and see our reactions, right? So, uh, so yeah. So, anyway, so we're on TV, clear as day, just like, ah, go Cubs! And uh, another funny thing about that is Zuki, right? Like, tell your little little part of that story. Yeah, so I actually yeah. went to see Cam that exact day. Yeah. I hadn't seen him in a while. We linked up for lunch, and uh, I got to his place, and he was like, yo, dude, I think uh, Gardner and Nevin, uh, the boys, are on TV. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they were at the Cubs game, and uh, they said somebody hit a home run right next to him. Let's check. Yeah. So we started kind of scrolling through, and then all of a sudden you see, like, these three <laughs> goons just jumping up and down. And, yeah, they had the, the whole squad out there. Yeah, man, it was cool for a bunch of reasons, right? Like, you don't get to see back-to-back walk-off home runs, right? right? Like, you don't see that. And the fact that, you know, Nev was like, let's wear our Bulls jerseys, I guarantee we're going to yeah. get on TV. Sure enough, we do. And, like, everybody, like, we sh I sent, because I saw a screenshot of it after, right? And everyone's like, man, I knew that was you motherfuckers out there. Like, you could tell that we yeah. were there, so... Yeah, that was just a cool, a cool sports moment that I that I had. So that was fun. 
Yeah, and Jay Stevens is a huge sports fanatic. Yeah, 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 so uh, he's going to be covering everything with sports. He's mm -hmm. our guy in, uh, yeah. in the company that's doing all that. Oh, yeah. I love sports, too, but he's all, he's all about it. So, sure, uh, yeah, we're going to be launching Weird Sauce Sports sometime yeah. in the next uh, month or two. Yep. Once this project keeps going a little bit longer and uh, we get it off the ground. But we'll be covering a lot of weird, wacky sports stories, a lot of epic sports moments, and... Uh, there's no shortage of those. No, there are not. Nope. There's also no shortage of weird and wacky sports going on in the world out there. No. Now, a lot of these sports that we found uh, are regional sports. You know, they kind of only play them in one area because they're just kind of smaller yeah. underground type sports. Yeah. Um, they're not made for everybody, obviously. No. So, um, especially a couple of these, these first couple, all right? These are just some weird ones. Yeah. All right. We are going to talk about the top five weirdest team sports right now, and we're going to start off with something that's pretty cool. It's called Kabaddi. Yep. All right. Now, this, even if you haven't heard of it, it's big. It is the national sport of Bangladesh. Yep. All right. Bangladesh has a lot of people in it. Okay? Yeah. I mean, when we were checking this out as well, like, there it was a full, you know, stadium of people cheering and shit. So, you know. yeah. Uh, let me set the stage for you, really, uh, real quick. You have two teams. They each have seven players. Yep. Okay. You have someone called the Raider, and the Raider is trying to run to half court. Yep. All right. Now you're trying to tag as many of the other opponents on the other side of the court as possible, but you have to do all of this holding your breath. Right. Okay. Yep. That's the catch of this game. Yeah. How they monitor that, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. But uh, it might be an honor system or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. But basically, this Raider, you can see it. We're going to drop a clip for you right now. You can see that uh, the Raider is basically just running. He's got this breath, and these other guys are just trying to not get tagged. Yeah, it looks like, there's, the, yeah, it looks like there's some sort of like defense tactic, right? Like There's some sort of way you know that you're supposed to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the more the guy has to run around, it looks like the quicker he loses his breath. So yeah. it looks like it's kind of a cat and mouse game. It's a standoff. Yeah. They're all like linked with hands and they're like trying to, yeah. And you just kind of dive in there and swipe at the opponents. So I think you can kick at them too, right? Yeah, like, you can you kick know, at You them. can do any way, you know, you touch the opponent, that's one. And it seemed like, you know, once you get one, I don't think you're like tagging like four people in one go. I think you get one guy. And then you kind of run back. It seemed like that was the exactly. strategy. Yeah, to that. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's very big in India. It's big in Bangladesh. It's called Kabaddi. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, It sounds like a fun playground game. It does. You know, even yeah. if you don't include the uh, hold your breath, it still sounds like a cool game. Yeah. Of like, all right, you have this, you run over there, you got to yeah. get tagged, but then you got to get back to your side without getting tagged. It does. It, it That's perfect. It yeah. sounds like a playground game that yeah. you would play. Yeah. And like. Elementary school or something. Right. Yeah. But now... Uh, one, now people are doing it. Now one billion people are into it. It's yeah. big in India. It's yeah. big in Bangladesh. You're yep. talking about 1.5 billion people right there. Yep. Um, moving on, this is probably, without a doubt, the weirdest one on the list for today. The other ones are all kind of weird, but... Maybe the weirdest one I've seen in all, all of the this research we've done so far, personally. Yeah. Um, this one's called... Buskashi. Yep. Okay, Buskashi. Yep. It is basically a game of polo played with a dead goat. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drop a video for you right now so you can watch this while we talk about it and explain it. Yeah. Basically, uh, it's a big, long uh, match. Sometimes it takes three to four days to complete this thing. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of people on horses, and they use a dead goat. The goal of the game is you have to take the goat and you have to get it into this circle. Now, the other team is trying to, you know, knock you away from the circle, knock the goat out of your hand, knock it off your horse, and then the other teams can pick it up and try to run it back to their circle and get it into their circle. Right. So you have just this massive, almost like rugby, but everybody's on horses and everybody's tossing around a dead goat. Yeah, and they put like the... They, like, soak the dead goat in water for 24 hours so that, like, the the hide hardens and stuff so the goat, like, maintains, you know, its form itself throughout the entire uh, yep. match or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, they, it's pretty brutal. Like, swinging this fucking goat around, like, 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see like some of the highlight stuff, you know, if you can get the goat and break out of this whole crowd of people and make a run towards the thing, then you're running at this circle and you're launching this, yeah. this dead goat and people are trying to whack Just it out of the air. It's <laughs> It's insane. Uh, you probably haven't heard of it because it's from Afghanistan. Yeah. That's not on too many people's uh, travel destination. And going to see people tossing dead goats around is not on too many people's activity program either. No, I'd probably check it out, though. I would check it out. Yeah. And we might have to check it out for you, the viewer. It looks pretty, uh, it looks pretty intense, though, yeah. Yeah, I think we've got a lot of cooler places to go yeah. on our uh, workation. Yeah, it was definitely weird. Yeah, it was weird to see for sure, but yeah. Hey, if we have any viewers from Afghanistan watching this, uh, let us know if you know anything about this sport. If you've ever been to one, we would love to hear some firsthand experience from somebody because it's a weird one. Yep. That's called Buzkashi, B-U-Z-K-A-S-H-I, Buzkashi. Yep. All right. This is a really cool one. Now, out of all of them, I think this is my favorite one, this next one we're going to talk about. It's just badass. It is called Botaoshi. And where is it from? Japan. Japan. We need, the, we need the All Japan episode. We need a Japan button. We, we, need, we need an All Japan episode. We need a Japan button on our yeah. uh, thing over here. We yeah. don't have that yet. No, uh, we'll get it. We've, we've, we've just referenced Japan so many times. Note to self, uh, get Japan button. What would that consist of? I don't know, man, but it, it's just got to happen. What, the the, the, the sound, sound effect? It's got to be one of those wacky uh, yeah. game show sound yeah. effects. Yeah. All right, we don't have that yet. We got a few other ones. Japan. Japan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Botaoshi. All right, let us set the stage for you before we show you the video yeah, so I you mean, can kind of feel how badass this is. It is basically capture the flag as well, but it is 300 people playing at one time. Right. All right. On and, two separate, like, fields. Right. So you have... Uh, 300 people total playing this game, 150 for each team, and you have two sides. One side is 75 people and a big, huge totem pole that they're trying to protect. The other 75 people are the offense, and they're running at the other team trying to guard their pole. Right. Okay? It is... The point of the game is to tilt the pole 30-degree angle. Right. All right? And you have judges... Uh, it's a very quick game. It's a two-minute two match, yeah. and it's just uh, – it kind of reminds me of, like, gladiator uh, fighting back in the day where they just, like, open the doors and you're just running at each other, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. People are just running and catapulting themselves over the uh, opponents and yeah. trying to climb up and body slamming each other. But in the rules, like, it's, like, no kicking, no punching, no whatever. But then you look at the video, right, and dudes are just, like, manhandling people, throwing – and there's a guy, like – Hanging off the top of the pole and shit. It's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's some video of that. You can see these guys playing it. Yeah. Um, it is in Japan, and it's not a brutal sport. Okay, no, I don't, it's yeah. not brutal at all. It's no. you're not allowed to punch stuff like that. It's a lot more uh, physical, and there's a lot of wrestling and stuff going on. But it's not anything like uh, Calcio's three. But that is something I would go see. What this? Um, yeah. Yeah, Botashi. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the videos and some of the videos we saw, too, it looks like it's a high school game. Yeah, it does look like it's a high school game. You yeah. know? I mean, I, I mean, it literally kind of does look like it derived from Capture the Flag. Like the ultimate team sport. Yeah. 150 people Just, on your team. Might be the biggest team sport. We got to check into that. Yeah, it's crazy. 150 players per team, uh, and it's just a blowout two-minute match. It's yep. a pretty cool game. Yeah, it is. Um, so... Maybe we'd need a little, little tournament of that. It sounds like a little, she? yeah, a little league or something like yeah. that. I don't even know if I know 150 people. Yeah, you need a lot of people. You could <laughs> yeah. probably play a watered down version, <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah, 20 yeah. people versus seven or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, okay, moving over into Europe, we're going to touch down in the Netherlands. Yep. This one's pretty cool, too. Yeah. It's a watered-down version of basketball, but it's got some cool things that basketball doesn't have, and it's a lot more user-friendly than basketball. Yeah, I've seen a lot more clips lately of this going around, so I think it's, it's been around a little while, but I think it's kind of gaining popularity. Yeah. 
Uh, here's a video for you. The sport is called Korg Ball. Korf Ball. Oh, Korf Ball. Sorry. Korf Ball. Korf yeah. Ball. K-O-R-F Ball. Yep. You can see in the video right now, it is a watered-down version of basketball, more or less. Yep. You have a basket inside, but you don't have a backboard. Yep. So, as in basketball, you're only playing 180 degrees of the goal. This, you're playing 360 degrees around the goal. Correct. Okay? You have eight players... Four of them have to be male. Four of them have to be female. Okay? You have a goal that's 3.5 meters tall, and the goal is to, just like basketball, get the ball into the basket. Right. But you can't run with the ball. Anytime you're holding the ball, you have to be stopped, and you can only pass it. The other players can move. Now, you can shoot it from anywhere except for the circle that's around the basket. As you saw in the video, there's a, there's a little... Um, an area there, the the zone, yep. that you're not allowed to shoot it in. So there's no slam dunking. Everything's got to be a shot, and everything is just one point. Okay, so it's pretty cool though because you get it's a, like I said, it's a lot more user friendly. You have the four male versus yeah. four me four females. It's a lot more co ed friendly. It's not so rough and tough. So your team has to be matched up evenly so the guys have to play against the guys and the girls play against the girls but it's the same sort of thing right is so there's eight on each team though correct exactly so the other so the four people on the one side of the court or the eight people on the one side of the court cannot go to the other side of the court right yeah there's two different sides yeah. so you have your four players you have your eight players four of them are on one side and yeah. four are on the other side right so there's always a Attackers and defenders. Exactly. So you're all, yeah. So you can't go to the other half of the the court. Right. And then yeah. after you score, you have uh, you switch sides. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's corf ball. Looks pretty cool. Um, it looks like a game you could just kind of set up anywhere. Yeah, it definitely does. If you have any sort of ball and you have any sort of basket, you can just set this game up. You can put it on the table. Uh, you don't have to have an actual backboard or anything. Yeah, and we didn't check, but we were when we were looking. There's this legend. There's this legendary dude, corfball player that was just yeah. smacking shots yeah, from everywhere, dude. Put James Harden to shame. Yeah, no look passes. And yeah, stuff it was like that. ridiculous. We gotta find out who that dude is, but he was he was great. But I gotta say, it looks like if you were a college basketball player and you entered a corfball league, you yeah. would probably, yeah, probably you know ball out. Yeah. But it's a three point five meter basket. It's different, and there's no backboard. Yeah, and this dude didn't look like he was a college basketball player. No, <laughs> he didn't. He looked like he was with Jay Stevens <laughs> yeah. at the bar before yeah. he started uh, yeah. playing. Yeah, he did. All right, the last one. Last but not least, it's going down. Yep, you know it's going down. Yep. And it has to go down because it's underwater. Yes, it is. Underwater hockey. Uh, yep. This one is super badass, too. It's weird. It's cool. And it looks fun. It does look fun. If you know how to swim and you're like uh, you're in really good physical condition, yeah. this looks like a sport that if you, know, if you and can get some people together would be pretty fun. But I mean, it seems like something that could be in the Olympics or something, right? Like... Yeah. And they already have these weird water, like water polo. Not that weird, but like, you know, underwater hockey seems like something that you could put in the Olympics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, here's the video right here. You could see it. Uh, the setup of the game is you have 10 players, but when the game is going on, you have six versus six. You can only have six people submerged at one time. So when one player comes up to take a breath, you can send another player down. Uh, you have two halves, 10 to 15 minutes each, and you're playing in a swimming pool. It's underwater hockey. Yep. You have a weighted puck that's uh, around three kilos or so that sinks itself, stays on the bottom of the uh, thing. Yeah. It's specially designed so that it, uh, it moves really well underwater. And everyone's in about two meters deep of uh, water. Right. Okay, you're in a little pool like that, and uh, you're not allowed to touch the ground. I mean, you're allowed to... You're not allowed to touch the other players unless you're fighting for the puck. Right. Okay, so you can't uh, grab anyone's foot. You can't push people out of the way. If you're fighting for the puck, you can yeah. be touching people. But there's you can't no, be, like, pulling people from going to get the puck and stuff like that. Yeah, there's no grabbing. There's no yeah. picking people, stuff like that. And they use, like, a little a little shimmy stick. That's what we used to call little yeah. hockey sticks back in the day, like little shimmy sticks, right? And they're just, like, looks like they're kind of attached to the to their arm or something. Uh huh. But yeah, it's just a little stick, and yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, 
it's growing in popularity. It's one of those things that you do have to have some things. You got to have uh, the swimming pool. You got to have a lot of people that are in good shape to play it. It's not really a pickup game like corf ball. Right. Um, but that's underwater hockey. Might be something that uh, all the hockey people like to do in the summer. Oh, yeah. You know, because that's how uh, skateboarding was invented, basically. Yeah. You had all the surfers that uh, couldn't surf certain times of the year. So they said, shit, let's throw some uh, wheels on these surfboards and... We can do this all year long. So uh, you got underwater hockey when the ice ain't around and it melts and turns into water. Now you can jump in the water and get your hockey on. Wow. Okay. Wow. So you Canadians maybe could tell us a little bit <laughs> yeah. more about that. We yeah. don't know about that. Yeah. You play any hockey uh, up there in Chicago? Nah. 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 But is it a big thing up there? I mean, the Blackhawks are big. Right. You got NHL wise. No, no. It's not like a thing where like you're just out in a neighborhood nah, and like freeze some, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People do, for sure. But oh, not okay. like at a level like Canada's at or like even like Minnesota. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. We don't have that many lakes, bro. Just the just five of the biggest ones in the world. Yeah, but those don't freeze over. Right. Yeah. So uh yeah, we didn't get into much hockey down in Texas, obviously. <laughs> but wa underwater hockey might be something. Bring it home, dude. I just don't know if I can hold my breath that long <laughs> at my age. You can't. It's probably not the one for me. No. We've uh, we've run into some other sports that sound like the one for me instead of this one. Yeah. 